uh, not quite the ambassadorial in its traditional format, uh, but still an ambassadorial, thanks to our journalist, Salome Metzquadishvili. And after Mr. Ambassador's insights and the last point in particular, I think it is the most right time to turn to your interview with the third largest uh, uh, bank in Georgia, that is Liberty Bank, considering that the banking sector is way much more developed than any other sector in this country. Um, and most projects, in, be it in agriculture or other sectors, um, are financed by banks, and they seem to be the backbone of the economy, especially in these tough times of pandemic. You're right. You're right. So, so I fully agree with you, Elena. And even in such tough times, we can definitely say that Liberty Bank was among the top three banks that Fitch Ratings uh, has upgraded. Uh, this means that Liberty Bank has shown its resilience to the major shocks and is ready for the post-pandemic period uh, with big plans of strategic transformation and development. Liberty Bank CEO Vasil Hodeli sat down with the checkpoints for further details and uh, we can just hear and follow his insights and analysis in just a second. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your response for our interview. And uh, well, my first question goes uh, slightly to your appointment election by the board as a CEO of uh, the Liberty Bank. But uh, is, was it fortunate enough that uh, in advance of one month, like before, uh, as you were appointed uh, as a CEO of Liberty, it was 16th of. January. January, correct. Yeah, 2020, yeah. 16. It's just the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, it, it was just, you know, the I cannot off. say that it's, uh, the start was so lucky or maybe I am wrong. What do you remember since then? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, definitely, first of all, thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite an interesting time. I mean, 2020. Uh, for me personally and uh, for the company as well. Yeah, it was uh, full of uh, energy and a uh, uh, lot of plans and uh, yeah, including of course, you know, the getting more familiar with, with the bank and uh, also knowing in person a lot of team people uh, because, team members, yeah, yeah, team members, because we have almost 5,000 people, of course, not, you know, the not kind of uh, organizing meetings with the uh, all of the people, but still, you know, I have, I had my own agenda, but this agenda kind of changed drastically, yeah. of course, and um, we started to concentrating on uh, some of the major, major uh, factors like uh, not kind of questioning uh, uh, our kind of business. Uh, momentum, which is not interrupting the business and serving uh, client, uh, clients, our customers, as is at least, if not at, uh, with uh, better quality. Uh, and uh, also doing that not in a, in a, in a usual way. Uh, and more than 1,000 people, you know, being, uh, uh, being at home, home yeah. and working, you know, uh, remotely and so on and so on. So, and especially for us, it was quite a challenging period uh, because uh, of uh, some of our clients uh, mm, requiring uh, more personal touch, like our elder population, elder population which is yeah. also one of the major part of our clientele. Yeah, major beneficiaries as well. Uh, later on about the major reason why I am here, but before that, uh, do you still intend or uh, maybe plan uh, to have the same uh, level of the support of your clients and local community as uh, your bank personally did last year in 2020 and uh, as it was the joint of effort coming from the whole industry. Uh, we do know both that 2021 is not going to be uh, better year for business and banking. Maybe it's going to be better actually as to compared to 2020 in, a fi fi in a financial figures as well, but not in general. 
Well, I would, I would somewhat agree that 2021 is also, this would be kind of a year of materializing all the risks um, coming from 2020. Meaning, uh, definitely, we're going to see uh, sorting up uh, MPLs in the banking sector, for instance. And we do understand it. And this is our expectation. So that's a comment on 2021. But as for support, so yes, uh, uh, in terms of support, uh, there was uh, uh, the banking system was uh, quite supportive, in my opinion, including Liberty, for the business society okay. as well as for the uh, population, I mean, the individuals, uh, individual uh, customers. And uh, in the name of Liberty, I, I would uh, love to, kind of, I would like to say it again, we would be close to our customers and again supporting them, despite even still challenging outlook on 2021. Uh, tell me, uh, tell me about the Monday's uh, event meeting, uh, which has been held uh, in the Parliament Office of Georgia. Uh, why can we just deliver a quite quick and proper answer? Because mostly, all all, all the questions were covered personally from you and uh, governmental agencies and Parliament themselves, but. Uh, What is the main reason why, for some uh, explanation, the rate for, uh, and thank you so much for this special uh, slow uh, wor wording of uh, older population, older yeah. society. Elderly population. Yeah, yeah, elder population of ours. Uh, can we talk about the rates itself? Why they are still considered 30.65, why it's still considered as an expensive one, and uh, is it uh, is it fair fair rate, and is it a market based rate? Again, um, 2020 was quite a complicated year, not only in terms of you know the reorganizing the business, but also, but also in terms of you know conducting quite an effective communication uh, within the company and outside the company as well, and. Uh, We've been uh, concentrating on some hygienic uh, uh, components like you know, the, uh, serving our clients uh, still in a different mode. And uh, why I'm saying that uh, now we've been given the platform and, and the context uh, to give the explanation on the questions posed in regards to our, some of the products provided to our elderly population by Liberty Bank, for instance. And this is not, not, not the first case, like um, the questions been posed on the same topic. Uh, it, uh, it was the case uh, previously as well. So this time, uh, I'm glad uh, that I was personally given the possibility to, uh, to give more clarity on the questions posed, like is the, is the price on the products delivered to our elderly population fair enough? Or if then not, is there any reason to think that for, for our, this, this, this uh, segment of our customer is uh, kind of a victim of any kind of uh, the, the monopoly, so to oh, say. Okay. So uh, we, we, we uh, delivered two facts to the- Two messages, yeah. Two messages to the uh, office, uh, parliament office, and uh, this was uh, uh, as follows. Uh, so we, we think that whatever is market price, the price is fair. So and if uh, we say, in, if we show that this price is market price, then... You consider it as a fair? Yeah, at Not least we... Your personally, generally? Generally, it has to be considered at fair. It, yeah, yeah, correct. And then we've, we've, we've shown uh, 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 several numbers and statistics which has shown that uh, this product, be it elderly population or any population in terms of the age, they, uh, they, they, they get this product at the same, if not the kind of, kind of the uh, more price, I would say, than, than, the, than our elderly population. So this was the explanation number one. And the number two is that the same 
people who, uh, who have credits with us, I mean, again, the elderly they population, they have four the times elderly. more credits without a banking institutions. Within with the other, with the yeah, rest without of banking the institutions, Georgian Without other banks, which is more than 1.5 billion lari, which means that they do have a freedom of choice. In regards to comp competitiveness, uh, worth to mention that uh, there is no uh, legal and factual pointing of uh, liberty within the recommendations coming from the budgetary and financial committee where this meeting has been held. But uh, at the same time, there were some statements following up these meetings in regards of competitiveness uh, and uh, there is a opinion, let me say so, that uh, competitiveness and other banks' involvement in the process of the distribution of this uh, amounts called pensions uh, might be useful to reduce uh, the price, might be useful to reduce the rate itself. At the same time, we know that uh, for the end of 2022, there will be uh, the revision and new possibility for your bank and others, if, if, if any, uh, to participate in the government's uh, bidding again. Please. Well, yes, uh, first of all, uh, there was no recommendation uh, whatsoever given to Liberty yeah. by, the, by the Parliament of Liberty Georgia. was not even mentioned. At Liberty all. Was, was not even mentioned because, again, we've stated that um, uh, in terms of the pricing, uh, uh, we are dealing here with the market and the market prices, so there is no question on that. I mean, in, the, in regards to liberty. Uh, as for the uh, other recommendations, well, yes, uh, the recommendations have been as follows, like uh, um, uh, all the government bodies uh, to be involved in the, in the process of a formulation of uh, potential uh, bidding uh, um, uh, terms and conditions. Basically, they need to sit down and considering information which was uh, provided on the committee mm -hmm. uh, to rethink and analyze uh, uh, the scheme which would, in theory, uh, provide more kind of grounds for uh, for uh, optimizing, I would say, the costs of, uh, on some of the products which our elder population might use. Well, my comment here is that there might be some solution on that. Let's see. Um, but uh, what I know for sure is that uh, the scheme uh, which was con construed through years and we are still you know, mm, uh, uh, increasing the quality of services, uh, it really, it really kind of requires uh, quite an experience, infrastructure, and knowledge, and let's see. With huge investment. Definitely. Which was mentioned by Fitch International right. just a few weeks ago, and it was officially announced, uh, like uh, delivering the message to the rest of the world and for the investors that uh, long-term long-term uh, rating of the liberty is fixed to stable. Right. So what does it mean for our investors in general, personally yeah, for you I'm, as well? I'm, I'm delighted that uh, um, we've been rated uh, by uh, such an esteemed rating agency as uh, Fitch is uh, uh, the outlook of, uh, um, outlook of stable from negative. Negative. Um, and uh, which uh, which shows that Fitch does believe in our firepower, so which would be enough to absorb the potential risks of you know, deter deterioration of our credit portfolio, not only Liberty's credit portfolio, but overall this is the fact that we are expecting MPLs increasing going forward. But our firepower would be uh, more than enough to absorb the shock and uh, still maintain an acceptable level of uh, uh, capital adequacy and, uh, and uh, liquidity. Thank you so much for your time and good luck. Hey guys, stay tuned, subscribe and follow us on BMG.